then give a little bit of info about the hiring process. So does that sound good? Sounds good. Wonderful. Uh, so you're already familiar, but um, just for broader context, uh, we're a kitchen that provides accessible, sustainable, locally sourced free food on the Studley campus of Dalhousie University. Um, we're a levied society within the Dalhousie Student Union, um, but apart from that, we're a registered nonprofit in Nova Scotia. So this means that we're tied to the university, but we're also a standalone organization. Um, we have uh, two mission items. Um, the first one is to create direct action to provide food services to students and to large, large community uh, as an alternative to exploitative capitalist food services um, and to create education, actions, and solidarity about food security, food justice, and food sovereignty. Um, by the way, if you, if there's a lot of food terms being used. Uh, so if there's any terminology that does not seem familiar to, to you, um, please let me know and I'm happy to give a quick definition on those. For sure. Um, so uh, on top of our values, our, um, our mission, uh, our values are that we're explicitly anti-capitalist, anti-oppressive and anti-racist. Uh, we engage in meaningful participation uh, by diverse groups of people. We practice and promote care, solidarity, and community. And we practice open, non-hierarchical decision-making. Uh, and our vision is that uh, we, want, we want to be a world uh, where food systems are based on care and solidarity and opposes injustice. I mention our mission, vision, and values uh, because uh, they inform our work. Uh, none of our jobs are come with a manual, uh, just a general list of tasks that we hope to get done. Um, but these uh, values and vision, as well as our mission, allows us to make decisions in the organization. Um, in terms of operation, uh, the Loaded Label is made up of a core group of 16 people. Um, we have six core staff members, so they're people that are hired either full-time or part-time throughout the year. And we have 10 board members made up of students and community members. Um, larger discussions in the organization are, are discussed by everyone and agreed on using consensus-based decision-making. This means that um, basically uh, we try to ensure everybody's on board with the decision before we move forward with it. Um, and our day-to-day -day operations um, are discussed in weekly staff meetings. Uh, this is just uh, usually attended by our six core staff members. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a place for us to sort of uh, discuss the particulars of an event that's going on and talk about our workload, if that's something that we need to discuss, um, and just, you know, specifics about the day-to-day -day operations, like I said. Um, we, on top of those, we also have committees uh, made up of board members and general volunteers, and those committees do specific visioning. For example, in relation to this role, we have a kitchen committee. Um, they do more larger visioning about sourcing and um, sort of like deciding where sh we should get our food from, um, what should happen in the kitchen, um, menu planning, and so on. Um, I mentioned that we're non-hierarchical, um, so that means that our work uh, is, uh, does not have any direct supervision. It's based in mutual respect, uh, dividing our tasks well, um, and ensuring that everybody has time to do them, and good communication. Uh, apart from that, we, have, we do have a human relations committee. Uh, this is made up of a few board members, and they help ensure the way that we work um, as well, and also ensuring that we don't get burnt out, get treated fairly, and also sign our contracts and so on. Um, but they do not hold any power to directly fire anyone or tell them what to do, basically. Um, this is just a background on how we work. Do you have any questions on that so far? Mm, all good so far. Wonderful. Um, and in terms of kitchen coordinating, um, we serve approximately 200 people a day. That's just one meal a day. Um, and we do that four days a week. 
Um, the kitchen coordinator is mainly responsible for planning and ordering these for these servings. Um, their, their tasks can be divided into five groups, um, prepping and cooking meals, ordering ingredients slash supplies and maintaining on inventory, menu planning, uh, communicate general communication and helping the run label as a collective. Um, in the coming slides, I'm going to be getting into details on what those tasks look like. Um, the coordinator is currently scheduled for 35 hours per week. Uh, we're hoping to use this year as like this um, as a place to see if uh, these hours work for the kitchen coordinator and they work well without getting burnt out um, and they're able to do these tasks well. Um, and then hopefully at the end of the year, we'll do a check-in with the kitchen coordinator to see if that worked for them uh, and if these hours sound good. Um, and these tasks uh, that I mentioned may overlap with other staff members uh, based on interest and capacity, um, especially since this list is pretty long and um, the kitchen coordinator may need assistance and often works with two other staff members in the kitchen. Um, for our servings, uh, our kitchen operates from 9.30 a.m. Uh, until 2.30 p.m. Tuesday to Thursday to prepare food and serve it. Uh, we also host prep parties on Mondays from 4 to 7 p.m. And we're hoping in the next year to do prep parties every night before a serving so that uh, the serving days are less taxed taxing on people. Um, the food is prepared by kitchen coordinator, currently prepared by the kitchen coordinator, serving coordinator, and the volunteer coordinator, as well as volunteers. And the next year, we're hoping to have an additional core staff member in the kitchen. Uh, and then the menu is set by the kitchen coordinator and is communicated between staff members during meal planning. Um, the serving and volunteer coordinators have also additional tasks on top of cooking. Uh, but they help cook in the kitchen and um, they usually have the skill set to run servings by themselves as long as the menu is clearly communicated between everyone and uh, it is ensured that everybody has the ingredients. Um, and uh, for cleaning, the that is done by whoever is in that kitchen that day, including staff and volunteers. So everybody takes part if they're in the kitchen that day. Um, we are proposing a schedule uh, that has each kitchen staff member in the kitchen three days a week. Um, this, this is to allow time to uh, take on other tasks that we have. Um, for the kitchen co coordinator, it would be, like I said, many planning and ordering and so on. Um, and um, here is a picture of our kitchen. Um, it is on the smaller side of things, but it does fit sometimes 10 of us in there. Um, that's all for um, serving and cooking. Any questions on that so far? Uh, no, it's all good. Uh, for many planning, um, so those tasks would be this um, many planning with local and local plant-based and ethically sourced ingredients. We are exclusively plant-based for our um, day-to-day -day servings. Uh, this is both in our contract um, because it allows us to have volunteers without any food safety certificates in the kitchen. It's, that, uh, it's more safe in terms of food safety and also ensures that it's accessible to everyone. Um, and the menu planning will include uh, finding recipes and then adapting those recipes to fit for 200 to 300 servings. I wrote 300 there because we are expecting some increase in there. Um, and also uh, while doing those um, conversions, uh, taking local, uh, availability of local ingredients, the capacity that we have as staff and volunteers and our budget into consideration. Um, on top of that, um, the kitchen coordinator is expected to lead regular meal planning meetings with interested community members. Um, this allows uh, to build community around the organization and also um, create space for volunteers to directly participate in the decision making for the organization. Um, also, generally building structures for kitchen organizing. Um, this includes storage, cleaning scheduling, task management, and so on. Um, 
On top of that, there are other food sourcing and organizational duties uh, that come with this position. Um, this includes creating an annual kitchen budget, researching and maintaining a database of suppliers and food sources. For this one, um, they may get some help from the committee. Um, keep an inventory of food and supplies. Organize and submit weekly food orders with local farmers. Uh, organize weekly market pickup of food. Order and coordinate cleaning supplies and other materials for the kitchen. Coordinate repairs and maintenance in the kitchen with the Dalhousie Student Union and be in charge of kitchen hygiene and organization um, and coordinate with other staff members. So this is a long task, but mainly uh, we're asking the kitchen coordinator to just be the point person to make sure that we have everything that we need in the kitchen um, and that's kept under a, or just like an organizational system that can be easily accessed by everyone so that there's no confusion. Uh, the kitchen coordinator may choose on the best way to do that um, and decide that with other staff members. And um, on top of that, just general communication duties, um, collaborate and coordinate uh, with kitchen staff to ensure servings run smoothly, like I mentioned, and um, supervise kitchen scheduling. So this means that like, sort of like have an idea of who is going to be in the kitchen at what times, um, and also just who the ingredients used with other kitchen staff. Um, also organize meeting times and overall communication with the kitchen committee um, and work with committee members to set goals for the year and create a short report at the end of the year. And the report is just a few paragraphs, just detailing what the committee got up to and um, what are their goals for the next year. That is all for tasks. Um, any questions on those so far? Uh, it sounds all good. Uh, just one question here. So will it be, uh, what kind of a report uh, are we asking for here? Uh, is it like a year end report with uh, the amount of servings, number of people served and so on? Or what all different metrics would be uh, covered in that report? So um, sort of, um, for that report, we all come together and decide what we want to include in that. Uh, so it's not something that's expected of you, but yes, general information about how many servings we did. Actually, how many servings we did, I keep track of that. Um, but, uh, you know, who we sourced from, uh, what meals have we cooked, how did we communicate with volunteers to plan meals, and like, sort of like what we did that year that was worthy of mentioning. Uh, what initiatives that we took on, if we took on anything, or if did any problems come up, and like what were those problems, and how can we maybe solve those problems? So just generally like think about it as like a year-long journaling to like how the year went. So this is something that we communicate to the um, to our board and also just the larger community, whoever is interested in leading. Absolutely. Um, oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, if this is something that um, is a concern for you that you would like to learn more about, our annual reports are also open for everyone. So if you want, I'm happy to send you a copy of an annual report that we've done. Yes, I would, I, yeah, I would like to review one of the previous reports as it would be helpful. Yeah. That sounds good. Um, just a, they can be overwhelming, they're pretty long. That being said, um, it's just something that we've done and it is sort of like every staff member decides how they want to do it. Okay. Um, all right. Um, sorry, any more questions on that, by the way? Uh, no, all good. Um, so as for pay and employee benefits, um, all staff members get paid $22 per hour. This is the living wage set by Canada Council for Policy Alternatives. It's an organization that provides policy alternatives, basically. And this is what they calculated is a livable wage to live in Halifax. Um, if this number changes, it is most likely that that number will change for us as well. And um, like, I, like it says there, all staff members get paid the same amount. Uh, on top of that, uh, there's access to health benefit packages through Dalhousie University. Um, and also two weeks of paid vacation per year, additional paid vacation when the student union building is closed for 
any holidays or if it's a snow day, um, paid days off for illness and to help maintain health, mental health, uh, paid days off for emergencies and major life events, and also access to professional development funds. Um, and in terms of applying for the position, oh, sorry, do you have any uh, questions for the benefits? No, it's all good. Um, and in terms of applying for the position, um, the full list of qualifications that we're looking for is listed on the job description, but these are the few things that we will definitely be prioritizing. Um, kitchen and time management skills, and this does not necessarily mean that you have prof professional training, although that is something very valuable for us. It's just, um, just being able to prove that you would be able to take on uh, a serving for 200 people and generally have like a good sense for organizing these types of things and um, work well in a kitchen environment. Mm -hmm. um, also interest in our mission, vision, our values that does not and willingness to learn about that. And also ability to work in a collective. Um, so just work well with others, do self-directed work well, and just be enthusiastic about working with others. Um, and um, even though your resume allows us to see where your skills are, um, your cover letter is especially important to us. Uh, so we are encouraging the applicants to just um, speak freely on any experiences that they've had, um, not necessarily professional, um, that they feel like would be applicable for this job, that show their interest for cooking, uh, tells us a bit about themselves and um, why they would like to do this job, basically. Um, and in terms of our hiring committee, just to provide some transparency on that, uh, it is made up of three board members and two staff members who, it, who will be responsible for reading your applications, shortlisting, and interviewing you. Um, and uh, we will make a decision after, after that process based on uh, employment equity, um, interview, how that went, uh, your qualifications, willingness to learn, experience with working collectively, alignment with anti-oppressive and anti-racist values and any other assets that is specific to the job. And uh, if this policy is something that you're interested in reviewing, uh, it is open for everybody to read. So you're welcome to email us and we'll send that to you. Um, and yeah, after taking all those into consideration, uh, we will make a suggestion to the board and then uh, have the rest of the team votes on it and then get back you as soon as the vote passes. Um, like I mentioned, we take uh, we do consensus-based decision making, and this means that um, it takes some time. So after the deadline, it will likely be um, a week and probably some more before we can get back to you. Just because, like I said, there's a small team reviewing interviews and then um, then communicating that with the board and ensuring that everybody has time to vote and view um, our findings. And once all that's done, uh, if you have been shortlisted, we will get back to you uh, if you got the job or if you, even if you did not get the job. And